Okay, so this time what we're going to do is we're going to be covering the remainder of Chapter 5, focusing first on climate and weather, and we're going to be ending with plate tectonics. Now, this first section, it mainly focuses on the difference between weather and climate, and let's start by investigating this quote. What it says is, global warming cannot be occurring, we had a very cool summer. And the reason I pointed out this quote is because there's a problem with it in that it fails to get at the difference between climate and weather. Now, weather is the given atmospheric conditions on any given day for a given place. So these conditions include the temperature, pressure, precipitation, the cloudiness, humidity, and the wind. Uh, what the climate is, is the climate is the average atmospheric conditions of a given place over many years. So the problem with this quote is that is it, it, it is possible to have a cool summer while still having a climate that is, is as a whole warming. Precipitation is a major factor in the study of both weather and climate. Precipitation refers to the water that falls from the atmosphere, regardless of its form. So that can be sleet, snow, rain, or hail. Differences in the amount of precipitation depend on several factors, but it's mainly the result of equatorial uplift of moisture. As warm air near the equator rises, like it did in our last two sections, it begins to cool. As the air cools, it loses its ability to hold moisture, which causes clouds to form and precipitation to occur. This dry air makes little difference over the water, but it's responsible for the formations of deserts on land. On the windward side of a mountain range, what happens is there's a buildup of moisture in the air, and as the air is forced to go up and up and up, uh, the amount of water that can be held within the air decreases. So as a result, this uh, air is forced to dump out all of its moisture as it passes over the mountains. And on the leeward side, which ha what happens is it only is exposed to dry air as all the moisture has been forced out. So the leeward side is referred to as a rain shadow because it doesn't experience rain. A similar process happens over many land masses in that wet, moist air from the coast, as it journeys inland, uh, the air is forced to dry. So it causes large amounts of precipitation near the coast and lower levels of precipitation inland. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about related to storms are tornadoes. And what tornadoes are, are there they're powerful rotating funnels of air associated with severe thunderstorms. When a tornado occurs, what happens is the spinning funnel of air, uh, it descends from the clouds and touch ground hitting the earth. So here are some various locations in which tornadoes typically occur, and uh, it shows how many there occur for every uh 100,000 square kilometers. So the most frequent place that uh, tornadoes occur is in Tornado Alley, which is in the southern United States. Now, the other major weather event that we're going to talk about are uh, tropical cyclones. So tropical cyclones, they can take various forms depending on where they are located. So, um, tropical cyclones, what they are, are giant rotating tropical storms with winds of 75 miles per hour or greater. Tropical cyclones are destructive when they hit land, and it's not so much because of their strong winds, but it's mainly due to the massive storm surge that follows and the flooding that occurs. So even though like all these things like hurricanes, typhoons, cyclones, they're all actually the same weather event. So moving on to plate tectonics, uh, the lithosphere, the land on the earth, it's comprised of seven large plates plus a few smaller ones. So these seven large plates are shown right here. 
And as you can see, there's also a few smaller ones that are illustrated on this slide as well. And uh, when two plates meet, what can happen is they can form three different types of plate boundaries. So um, they show these three plate boundaries on this map. They're divergent boundaries, convergent boundaries, and transform boundaries. And we're going to talk about those right now. So a divergent plate boundary, what that is, is when uh, two plates move apart. And when these plates move apart, a ridge of molten rock from the mantle wells up between them. Uh, this occurs along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is the most common place that these uh, divergent plate boundaries occur. The next type of plate boundary that we're going to talk about is a convergent plate boundary, and that's when two plates are meeting, and one of those plates sometimes descends under the other in a process known as subduction. So as you can see right here, one of those plates is heading over, I'm sorry, under the second one. And what happens during a subduction is... So this process of subduction, it can sometimes result in the formation of mountain ranges like the Himalayas. And the Himalayas are a mountain range that occur right here between the border between India and Asia. And that's where mountains like Mount Everest are located. So the last type of boundary that we're going to be talking about is called a transform plate boundary. And uh, this is when two plates move horizontally in opposite directions compared to one another. See, one plate one is moving in a downward direction while plate two is moving in an upward direction. Now, the next thing we're going to talk about is earthquakes. And earthquakes are caused by a, a release of built-up stress, typically along a fault line. They typically result in the release of seismic waves, and these can produce landslides and tsunamis. Volcanoes are likely to happen in one of three spots. They can typically happen in subduction zones, which are illustrated here. And uh, you'll notice that the subduction zones around here particularly, uh, they form an area called the Ring of Fire, which is a ring of volcanic activity that occurs along the Pacific. Uh, <clears throat> Other places that volcanoes can occur are in areas of spreading plates. So they can happen along some spreading zones as well as areas known as hot spots. So uh, an example of a hot spot would be the Hawaiian Islands. So that's basically what you guys need to know as far as tectonics and uh, weather and climate goes for Chapter 5. Um, yeah, that's it for chapter five. Good luck, guys.